Hey guys, this is Tara with Teaching on Lemon Lane, and this is a brief video walkthrough of how to design a costume using these tools I've got here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I wanna point out um, are these shapes here. Anytime you see a shape with this pattern on it, you'll know that it is a picture placeholder. And what that means is that you can use a Google search to insert an image into the placeholder. And we're actually going to use these placeholders to construct a costume. So here's a couple examples of ones that I have created. So we've got a clown. You'll notice these different shapes. I've inserted pictures or different patterns to create the costume, um, the glasses and the hair or the wig, those were all the accessories that we also have as a tool. So here's another option. Again, these shapes you see here that construct the outfit or the costume were the picture placeholder. So let's go ahead and head back to ours. So as you look at those shapes, um, consider what you could use them for as you create a costume. I also want to look at the accessories and the wigs and the glasses um, that I've included that you can also use. These have been scaled to the face shape, so you should just be able to drag and drop it and then place it. So we're off a little bit here, and so it fits right in. So in order to drag and drop an accessory or one of the picture placeholders, um, what you will do is you will single click and then you click and you hold it and you drag it to where you want to go. So we will be using that a lot. So single click and then you click and hold to drag. So that's how we move the different items with the accessories and a lot of the um, shapes or the picture placeholders. You shouldn't need to size them unless you are trying to do something else or really creative with them, which is completely encouraged. Um, let's go ahead and look at how to insert a picture into the actual design. So your teacher may have already inserted their face in it or your face. Um, if they haven't, this is how we do it. So we single click where it says to click here to insert picture. Now notice when I single click the option to replace image pops up here. So again, when I click off of it, replace image is gone. So I come down here, single click, and then I come up here and click replace image. When I click on replace image, I have these different options, upload from computer, search the web, use your Google Drive, maybe your photos. Um, you could even take a picture if your uh, computer or device allows that. What you will most likely be doing is uploading from the computer. So you would click upload from computer and then select the picture file, and then you're going to insert it into that. Um, just for example purposes, I'm just going to do a quick search the web for a headshot. I think the one I like is when I search it like this. There it is. So this would be a great option. Notice the picture. He is looking directly at the camera and that he is face on. So if you need to take a picture for this, um, a lot of times your class pictures are a great option. Um, but if you're taking one, make sure that you are facing the camera with your shoulders square and looking directly into it. I'm gonna insert this one for example purposes. So notice when I insert it in there, it is not the right size. I'm gonna zoom in so we can have a really good look at this. So you'll notice her shoulders are all the way up here. What I want this to be is just the face. So we are going to need to scale and crop our picture. And you will most likely need to do this with your picture as well. So to scale and crop, we are going to double click one, two, and then that gives me the option, these crop options right here. You are not going to be cropping the circle. When you crop this circle, it's going to make the circle smaller or larger. And remember, this circle is already scaled proportional to the accessories. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use the blue diagonal squares. So any of the squares on the diagonal we're going to use to size it. Do not use these middle options. When I use the middle options, it distorts the image and we don't want to distort the image. So do not use the middle blue squares. We're gonna use the diagonal ones instead. So I start, I single click and I drag. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the picture larger. But now notice it's only her hair. So I'm going to single click and drag the picture um, to where it is more of her face, but I'm still not zoomed in enough. So again, I'm gonna go up to this blue corner, single click and drag. 
and we're closer. Single click and move the image and we're close. And it still has a lot of hair, so I'm going to zoom in even more. Oh, did that not work? Try that again. And single click and move the picture. And I'm gonna size it to where it outlines the face as closely as I can get it to as possible without cutting off like the chin or any of the face features. So that looks pretty great. I think that's pretty close. I can maybe go a little bit more. And I'm really happy with that. I've got the face outline, um, so I can click off of that. And now it's automatically going to crop it in. So we can zoom out. We'll go to the fit. And now we have the image inside there. So again, this may be a picture of your teacher, or it may be a, a picture of yourself. So lots of fun options that way. Now we're going to design the costume. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out so I can see my different options. And I think that it would be fun to create a witch. So we're gonna create a witch. Um, the way that this activity is created is all based on layering. So we are going to layer different accessories and different um, shapes on top of each other to create a Halloween costume. So I'm doing a witch. Let's go ahead and start out with a wig. Um, I think the purple hair is fun. So I'm gonna click on the purple hair. I single click and then I click and hold and I drag it into place. And again, the shape of the wig is already sized to the proportion of the head. So we're just gonna get it nice and close. Okay, that looks great. Now I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to grab, say my, I think there's a witch hat right there. Single click, click and hold and drag. And it just so happens that the layer is where it needs to be. Um, there's a chance that when we did this, the wig would have been in the wrong order. So it would have looked like this. Obviously, that's not how we want it to look. So we would click on the hat and we would always bring the hat to the front. Never send something to the back and never try and just move it one layer back because of all of these items, these items are already a layer in itself. So the best way to solve a problem when say this isn't layered correctly is always to bring an item to the very front. So I'm gonna click on the hat and to bring an item to the very front, I'm going to come and click up here to arrange order and bring to front. Again, bring forward isn't going to solve your problem in most cases. Send backwards isn't going to and send to back is actually going to create issues because this whole activity is based on layers. So always bring to front to solve a layering issue. Um, another issue that you might run into, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more, is let's say that when I place, maybe I wanted to place some glasses on her. So I click and drag and I go to place the glasses and they're behind the wig and I don't want them to be behind the wig. Um, and you'll notice I go, I want to move them, but every time I go to move those glasses, instead of clicking on the glasses, I click on the wig and that's because the glasses are now behind the wig, but I really want them in front. Um, instead of going here and arranging and ordering and trying to send the wig all the way to the back, the best way to problem solve an issue like this is simply to move the wig out of the way. And then I click on the glasses. And again, I always solve this problem by bringing it to the front. So order, bring to front. And now that has placed my glasses as one of the front layers. So now I can click on the wig, place it back to where it was, and this time the glasses will actually be in front of the wig like I wanted it to be. So again, if you're trying to click on an item and a bigger item is in the way and it won't allow you to, simply click on it, move it out of the way, bring the one layer to the front, and then move it back. That's the best way to solve that problem. The next issue that you might run into is when you are trying to align different accessories or body shapes um, with your costume. 
and the body outline shows through. So you'll notice when I take the witch's shoes and I go to place them over the legs, um, I can still see that body outline. And if you don't like that, you can actually click on the bottom half. So especially if you are creating a mermaid and the feet are still showing through, um, once you have everything placed, you can actually single click on that bottom half and delete it. So that way we just kind of have that as a guideline. So that is an option. If the body outline is bugging you, you can actually delete it if you need to. Um, let's go ahead and create a witch's dress out of the picture placeholders that I have here. So looking at the options here, I'm trying to find, I could either do a, you know, a skirt and maybe we'll do a skirt. Let's do a witch's skirt. So this looks like a good option for a skirt. So I single click and then I drag and I'm going to place it. And once I have it where I want, now notice the layer's not quite right. I want the skirt to be over this. So again, the way to solve that is click on the skirt, go to arrange, order, and we always bring to front. Now that it's in the front, that's exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to change the pattern. So we are going to insert a pattern into the picture placeholder to create the illusion of this costume. Um, before we do that, I want to go look at the Google word search, the word bank. So let me find that page and we are going to look at that. So the Google word search bank is a page of terms that are really going to help you filter your word search. So um, things like the different patterns um, and especially wallpaper, pattern, background, fabric, paper, or design, these terms will really help give you the best results to use with your costume um, because they are going to give you images that are kind of flat, that can fill the surface area really well. If we don't do that, um, we might get a plaid actual you know, shirt that someone's wearing with a background behind it. And so you start to get things mixed. So by adding these different terms to our Google search, we're going to get a lot better results for what we can use. So let's go in here and jump in and I'll show you an example. So I single click on the picture placeholder. And when I single click on that replace image pops up. So now I click replace image and we're going to search the web. And this is where our Google search comes in. So directly to the left, we have our Google search. Um, maybe I want a green and black striped background. So I'm telling Google the colors that I want. I'm even telling it the pattern that I want. And by adding background, I'm giving myself a better chance of having a full um, image to use. So these are great options. And to simply use them, um, I could go in and I will double click on the image that I like, and it will automatically insert it into the shape. So now we have the skirt. We're gonna repeat those same steps to create a top and create sleeves if we want. So again, I just moved the shape over and now I want to edit it. So I come up here to replace image, search the web, and now I'm going to think of the color. I'm gonna try black glitter. And we've got background there, which again is gonna give us a better option. I think this is gonna look great. And so I double click or I can single click and then hit replace. Um, and it's going to automatically insert it and create the top for me. For time purposes, the last thing that I'm going to add to the costume is simply the sleeves. So again, I single click and then I click and hold to drag on the shape that I want to use and I place it. So these are my sleeves that I chose to go with and I place it using the outline kind of just as this idea. And then we go in, replace image, search the web. Um, I could just use the black glitter again or I could use a different pattern. We'll go ahead and just use the same. So I make sure that I single click, replace image, search the web and I insert it in. Now that I'm done with my costume, the fun part is that I can actually insert a background now. Now to insert a background, all we're going to do is we're going to come up here to this button and we're going to single click and then we're going to replace image and we are going to search the web. And I think I want to put my witch with a haunted 
house. So I search haunted house. I think this is going to look really cool or this one here. Ooh, look at this one. Great options. I go ahead and I double click and this is going to insert the background for me to complete the picture. If you are wanting to print these and you don't want to print it with all of this ink and all of this color, another great option is to simply come up here and go replace image, search the web, and instead of doing a background, you just do a white background, making it much more printer friendly. And then we insert our white background. And there we have a great printer friendly digital option that you can print out. Don't forget to add your name here. Um, and if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks so much, guys.